certainly very appreciative of the uh, Outback Bowl, Mr. McVeigh and the committee, uh, for extending the opportunity for us to be here. Uh, it was a tre tremendous week for us and, and our players and our uh, you know families. Uh, you know, one of the best bowl um, schedules and setups that we've been around in terms of uh, time for preparation and time for uh, activities and you know things for our players to do. Uh, so certainly, thank you for that opportunity and. Uh, you know, it was awesome for our guys. Uh, you know, for today, you know, certainly uh, want to extend congratulations to Coach Ferentz, his staff, and his his program. A very hard hard fought game against an excellent opponent. And uh, you know, from our perspective, there was just you know too many things and too many missed opportunities. Uh, you know, throughout the course of the game uh, that we didn't capitalize on. Uh, too many penalties. And I believe it was eight for us. And you know, second second time this year that the opposition didn't have one called on them. Uh, but that 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 didn't bear that, that didn't have a factor on the game. You know, can't turn the ball over, can't give up explosive plays. Uh, you know, got to score touchdowns and can't have penalties take plays off the board. So uh, certainly, you know, it's my responsibility to make sure that those things get corrected and they're right moving forward. Uh, very appreciative of our seniors who decided to play in this game and Jeffrey Simmons who declared for the gap draft. Uh, and, a, and a credit to them for today and their entire season, and everything that they've done uh, for Mississippi State throughout their career. So the kids fought their tail off. And ultimately, uh, we didn't do a good enough job coaching them and putting them in a position to be successful. And certainly, uh, you know, when the opportunities were there for us to make plays, you know, during the whistles and, and between the whistles, we certainly didn't do enough to earn the right to win. So, any questions? Coach, you talk about missed opportunities. The two field goals instead of touchdowns at the beginning, that big? Yeah, certainly, certainly that's something, uh, you know, the, the, the penalty, the whole penalty that took the uh, score position away right before the half. And then you know, a couple times down in there, you know, having to sell for three instead of instead of seven in a tight game like this, and you're chasing points, you know, that, that makes a, makes a bunch of difference, particularly down there at the end of the game. You had the ball first and goal at the one and three straight quarterback runs. Is that is that what you were wanting in that situation? Yeah. Well, I mean, they're they're bringing seven to eight people on the blitz, and they're, they're, there's not many things that you can dial up uh, to kind of free someone up and get an extra guy. So quarterback run is part part of the plan that we had in anticipating. Uh, the defense that we saw, and actually was a, he had an option of whether to run it, hand it off, or run it or throw it on all those ones, and the read all dictated that he ran it. But, uh, you know, they had all the interior gaps, uh, plus people off the edge, plus another guy on top of that. So uh, there's only so many, so many things you can do running the ball to have an opportunity down there. The ball bouncing off of Gidry's hands in the end zone, uh, did, did he say anything as uh, – Missing the ball and things. Did he come back with any explanation? For that? Yeah, I didn't. I was communicating with the guys up top uh, about the series, but uh, you know, certainly that, that's you know not the only reason. Uh, you know, he, he made some big plays throughout the game, but you know, you can point back to a, a bunch of things throughout the course of the game that could have you know changed or dictated the outcome. And you know, that was a huge momentum swing there. You, you, know, you don't score a touchdown and you get three on the board and you're up there. And instead of that. You know, you're taking points off the board for you, and I believe they drove down and scored a field goal on, on that drive. So it was a uh, definitely momentum shift. You mentioned missed opportunities. It seemed like every penalty came at a huge opportunity. In opportune time. Yeah, I mean, it was only only eight of them. Did it feel like those eight penalties had an outsized impact on the yeah. game, given the number of them? Yeah, I think it, more than anything, a cumulative effect. You know, you know, had the, had the long run call back for the offensive face mask. You know, first and goal with the one call back for a hold. So. Uh, you know, a, a lot of them not just were negative yardage, but you know, yards from the result of what the play was, and a lot of those were positive. What happened with Colin on the sideline? You know, did, did he actually lose consciousness? No, so not, that, not that I saw. He, he went through protocol with uh, the uh, he was checked out by our trainers, so he was he was cleared to go back. What did you see on the long pass play to easily? That was the longest play you guys have been up this year. What happened there? Uh, a little communication issue on, on the back end relative to the whole coverage we were in. Coach, did I would do anything different on offense and defense that you didn't expect? I mean, there were some tweaks. I don't think anything major uh, on, on either side of the ball, but certainly when you have this this much time in the game plan, there's not going to be wholesale changes, but there are going to be things you bring into the game plan that you know are a little bit different than you've done throughout the year. But I'd say for the most part, it was, it was pretty steady. Coach, you talk about that. Is that a help or a hindrance having that much time? Sir? Is that a help or a hindrance having that much time? I, th I think it's a help, you know, just from a developmental standpoint where you get your guys uh, you know, your young guys work early on in preparation, and then, you know, you get, uh, you know, move ahead and get into the opponent preparation. So I, I think it's good to get all those extra practices, one, for, for development, and two, for preparation. You finished your first year 8-5. and five. How do you feel about that? Is that what you thought? I'd feel a lot, a lot better if it was 9-4 and four after today, but, you know, you look at the games, 
you know, we lost or all the quality opponents. You know, we had opportunities in all of them and, you know, didn't come out on top for different reasons. Uh, you know, but ultimately, you know, won't be satisfied until you're 14-0. And, and, you know, we <coughs> finished regular season 8-4, won the 8 bowl. You know, had an opportunity to win our ninth game in the, uh, you know, in the bowl game and you know, weren't able to finish it off. They, they had trouble running for almost the entire game. Yeah. What was the, the game plan put together by Coach Shoot? No, I think he did a very good job, you know, uh, in our preparation, uh, you know, kind of having, uh, you know, an idea how we wanted to attack them, trying to gain the numbers range and point of attack, and certainly our guys executing it and having very good players uh, up front at the second level. What do you think of the job Tucker Day did to flip field position for you so many times today? Well, he did. I mean, something we had talked about all year and, and looking for him to improve on his kick, and I thought he'd come out today and probably has the best performance so far. Were you, how, how were you inspired with the way you used Keaton today and wide out and running back and things like that? No, I mean, it's just it's just a package. And a lot of that two quarterback stuff is predicated on what the defense does and uh, kind of their, um, you know, the static nature of some of the stuff where it gives you an opportunity to kind of put a, put a package together that, that you know will have an opportunity to be successful. And, you know, we got some, you know, mileage out of it, had an opportunity there on the one that Nick threw him in the first half that you know, could have split for a touchdown, but, uh, you know, thought that was you know, something to give us an advantage against what they do so badly. Losing Smitham in that early in the game, how did that impact your secondary? Yeah, I mean, on a day we rotate a lot of people there, and for Mo, who's, who's had a tremendously productive year, and, you know, certainly helps, or certainly hurts from a, uh, you know, from a depth standpoint, a rotation standpoint. Penalties were a common theme in a lot of the else losses this year. Yeah. How concerning is it that you had over a month to prepare and they still kind of reared their ugly head today? Um, anytime you have that number of penalties, I think it, it is a concern. I, I don't think it um, necessarily uh, had much to do with the amount of time that we had to prepare. I mean, you, you look at the dis situations and, uh, you know, not many of them were pre-snap penalties that we saw during Kentucky that were offsides and things of that nature. You know, pass interference, an offensive face mask, a couple holds, you know, those, those are things that are happening uh, during the course of the play. You know, none of which are acceptable, but are kind of a little bit different than some of the multiple penalty things that we saw earlier in the year that were pre or post-snap. The, oh. the ones that you don't like are the celebration ones and things like that. I think there's only one of those. How challenging was it to block up and has a especially off the edge? Hey, he's he, for three years now, or two, or however long he's been, it seems like forever. That guy, you know, he's a, uh, you know, he, he does an unbelievable job. He has a great, you know, array of pass rush moves. You know, he can beat you with speed, he can beat you with power. He has a good counter underneath. You know, the Nelsons and, and number 42, they, they have a very good defense run. Where do you expect good, where do you expect the most progression between year one and year two? Um, you know, I think you want to see, uh, you know, an overall progression, maybe not necessarily pick one area. You know, we're gonna, we'll go back when the season ends, we'll watch all the cups and all three phases and kind of, you know, do a self scout on the things we do well and, you know, what we need to improve on and, you know, how much of that is, is changed based on our, our uh, personnel that's returning. You know, ultimately, at the end of the day, you want to make sure you're putting a plan together, you know, that's going to increase your win total on a, on a yearly basis. Coach, the targeting call happened right at the time. Up in the press box, it looked like it was very close hairline. You think the same thing? Yeah, I'm not going to come What did you tell your guys going into the half? Because it, it clearly you guys came out with a lot more energy in the second half. Yeah, I think we cleaned up, you know, some of the penalty stuff. I said a lot of the, you know, a lot of the re of reason, that, you know, was, was a lot of self-inflicted, uh, you know, issues, you know, in terms of, you know, the celebration penalty that extended a drive that allowed them to score, you know, some of the fundamental and technique stuff with the holes and other things like that. So we need to get back to playing our brand of football you know, executing, you know, playing with better precision and, you know, certainly the, uh, the special teams playing the interception and be able to build points off of that help. Good. Good.